Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play The Witcher 3 with me, Varex, Geralt and Roach, who's about somewhere. We're on a bridge in Terrasant, about to go and examine the body that was washed up down there in the nets. It's been a little while since I uploaded, I know I said that last time. Last time was planned, this time was not. Life and stuff, right? Um, apologies. Um, but we're back. Uh, I told myself I'd record for a half an hour. Maybe that's what I'll do, which is easier to get back into something when you still want to do it for a little bit. So uh, this might only be half an hour long. If I find a natural break, just to get the momentum back into recording Keep again. Calm. Start no pros. Thanks very much for that, dude. Um, also, I upgraded the game to version 4.01 because there was some bug fixes and stuff like that as pertains to... Um, Quests, um, and I saw one or two about this, so you know, this year DLC. So I thought I'd uh, I'd upgrade. So I have. Me, Witcher. I can see you're a kid. Why would I? I mean, anyone. I mean, look at the dude, right? He's got like two swords and a crossbow. His sword has, you know, his horse is like full of equipment and stuff for killing people. So yes. Um, Geralt kills people. He does. Uh, there's also a quest about Gwent. Uh, we'll do that as and when, but currently the momentum is with the main main quest of the DLC, so that's what we'll do. And yeah, this is pretty as hell, isn't it? Absolutely pretty as hell. With that in the background, of course. Straight out of fairy tale. Geralt, of course, not really fitting in too well with Sounds some surroundings. Fight. Have to hurry. Come on. Okay. Damn it. Killer must still be here. Oh, you did. Throat torn open by man like jaws. Man like, except for long fangs. Cellar, gotta be. Yeah, this is really good. Claw wounds from five separate claws, spread of a small human hand, massacred by a vampire. Not an Ekimara, though, or a Fletter, Bruxa, gotta be. Hmm. Attacker had no trouble knocking over the cart. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Wherever Muck carried the body in this cart. Ah, so it's possibly... Ah, thank you for stopping spinning. Okay. Maybe some other things to, uh... Oh, man, Grizzly. Killed with a single blow. Birds aren't bothered, are they? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Roach isn't bothered either. All right, let's read this journal entry. <clears throat> um, I'll go the wrong way, no doubt. Oh, we haven't. Okay. So we're looking for a vampire. Uh, this is it, I guess. A Bruxa. If you must travel through the woods, steer clear of any places where you can hear several different kinds of birds at once. That sounds means you're entering a Bruxa's territory and can kiss your life farewell. So the birds are to do with the Bruxa. Okay. Fortunately for us all, Bruxa are rare creatures. Most live far from population centers, for they care greatly for their own safety and make their lairs in places where they cannot be taken by surprise. Those who decide to live near men avoid crowds and emerge from their shelters only at night. When they do, one could almost take them for delayed travellers hurrying towards their night's lodging, yet subtle details give them away. Their close ties to birds, their piercing voices and their breathtaking speed of their movements. Brooks are fair, far swifter and stronger than men, but the greatest asset is their ability to turn invisible. Oh good. Brooks are dart about with uncanny speed. 
and with their power of invisibility, they can easily confuse opponents and attack unexpectedly or from behind. Thus, when fighting these creatures, the Moon Dust Bomb is a great aid. While it cannot eliminate the vampire's invis invisibility altogether, it can make it easier to track its motions. A generous smearing of vampire oil is also effective, somewhat, somewhat obviously. I would have thought vampire would have been good against it. Brooks use used their sharp claws to attack and can easily break through an important guard by buffeting him with a hail of blows from all directions. They will try to bite their prey and drink its blood once it is weakened, so every witcher who expects an encounter is supposed to swallow a black blood po potion beforehand. Brooks are also known for their sonic attacks which knock down and stun their prey. So the good things against it are this moon dust thing, um, vampire oil, obviously black blood, and Eirden. Okay. Black blood and moon dust could be lifesavers. We got 150 experience points for checking our journal. Okay. <clears throat> nope. So there's moon dust. And, um... Injures and knocks back vampires and necrophages when they try to wound him. Alright. Seems like a good time for a save. Footprints. Small bare feet. Lead deeper into the cellar. Fell down the stairs. Broke his neck. Hurled against the wall with great force. This is really nicely set up the way it's building. Used this to batter down the grate. Use this? What, this person? Took a lot of strength to batter this down. You. Saw you at the inn. I know what you are. Don't know why you killed these people, though. Clearly wasn't for their blood. We don't have to fight. You are wrong. Yep. <clears throat> I cannot let you leave. You're gonna make me wait. You know what we need? Which I didn't do, we need some vampire oil as well. Which I think is like the... I only have enhanced. Well hey, built of nothing, right? Uh, 
Yeah, I should have, shouldn't I? <laughs> There's one thing queuing it up, but another thing actually using it, I know. <laughs> we got it though. Don't know, but loot, right? Where is the table? There. That wasn't too bad, but yeah. Chewing black blood and then actually drinking it. Two different things, Variax. Come on. This is at uh, 46%, so... Uh, stinks. Waterlogged. Both hands amputated. Body was quartered just as I thought. Laid in water for some time. Head swollen, and something took a few bites out of it. Hmm, something in the throat. A pouch, bulging with coins. Elf guardian florins, from several different provinces. If the murderer did this, means we're dealing with a sentient thinking beast. Body was chopped up after death. Blows struck with great force, but bones sliced through, not crushed. Creature that killed him had long claws, sharp as a witcher's blade. First sank its claws into the victim's heart. No Bruxa did this. Third hand. A spare? Except it's clearly not the victim's. Guardsmen must have not noticed it as they picked everything up. How's this possible? Still warm. Blood still flowing? Several monster species can regenerate. Never heard of that happening to their severed limbs, though. Or of their limbs seeming completely alive after so much time. Examine the tissue more closely later. Might learn something. You're gonna bring Thing with you? Maybe it's a companion. So, Murderer was clearly a monster, but not a Bruxa. But then why'd the Bruxa come here for the severed hand? And who does the hand belong to? Why the hell's it still warm? Now, pouch shoved down the victim's throat. What's the significance? And why was he chopped up into pieces? Lots of questions, no answers so far. Need to know about the other victims. I'll ask Palmerin to get me in to see the Duchess. We will once we've looted everything, right? Well, this is disappointing. <laughs> so yeah, really mysterious so far. I'm trying to think back to when we saw that those pictures of the monster because they were all different right because it could be several different monsters so this thing killed like two three four Five, if you count that that guy, even though he can't, eat. But he, he can't. He's only killed this himself, that guy. But still, we'll count him. That's five. Uh, 
six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen guys, thirteen guards. Maybe thirteen, maybe twelve guards and one dude. There's a lot, there's a lot of dead people. A lot of dead people in this, this otherwise lovely surroundings. Hmm. <sighs> Yes, yeah, so we gotta go see the Duchess, which is I guess at the big the big palace city place. Yeah, it's just nice. Just everything's nice. I mean it's weathered, right? But it's still pretty. I, of course, have no money, so... Take all the cheese you can carry, Geralt. We'll need it all for the journey ahead. It is locked. Interesting. Hmm. Well, that upsets me. Get in here. Nope. Oh. All right. I get the hint. Corvo, huh? It's a name I kind of recognize. <laughs> filthy peasants. Um, filthy pheasants. <clears throat> Alright, so where are we heading now? I don't want to leave. This is so nice. It's pleasant, pleasant mountain stream. Yeah, those mountains there, they're, um, all those giant rocks, they're intriguing. All right, up there. Pick up brooch again, then. Come along. Don't you, um... Eating any grass that's uh, that, that's stained with blood, do we? Wrong way. Let's go. Let's just check where we're supposed to go. Um, we're going there, next to this arena. It looks like so we can get round this way. Yeah. Okay. realized <clears throat> yeah far too pretty you know compared to, to Velen yeah quite quite the sharp contrast I've got distracted I know come on Roach there's something going on up there but The main quest is pressing enough, isn't it? Am I going the right way? Uh, no. <laughs> Should be going that way. Not down there. Into wherever that is. Yeah, all in good time. It's just still the wrong way, I know. Ooh. Yeah, what's going on here? Do 
like it here. Slow now. The witch is it through the streets while everyone sleeps. to be a medic. He ordered the Good man! I need see. a fresh set of shoes for my mouth. Prompt to stretch your service, um, sir. I heard about the that. The racing model is one I recommend. Like no durable and a mere 50 cards apiece. Armor chromed, engraved or fluted, whatever your heart's desire. Uh, okay, well, I see, I see a few things that I... Let's see what you got in stock. Appeal here, but uh, mostly I'm selling the stuff that I've that I've looted off guards. So you're an armorer, so you probably don't want these swords. Oh, okay. Now we're building it up again, building our our vast riches back. Okay. Now, are these any better than the same? Okay, so it's just for style. Well, I'm not going to buy stuff for style. Yeah, okay. So our horse is still as good as he can be. Um, and I'm not going to get any of this until I know what I need. And you saw I, didn't you? So, hey. No, you're busy, but you up for a round of Gwent? I know, I know. Here, Master Witcher, over here. Sorry. Nilfgaard, all right, okay, fine. Good, 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 good. Yeah, good. All right, we'll probably keep that. My turn. Well, let's start with the buy. Because I've kept him, we won't get another one. That's how it's going to work. All right, what angle do we want to do here? Nilfgaard have a lot of spies, and I don't have any decoys, which we're kind of hoping to get. This is ranged, which is probably going to be good for us because that's the only range that we have. Um, <clears throat> possibly you as well. And you add one. So it could be a nice combination, actually. You and that. All right. Yeah, the AI always misuses that. Alright, Scorch could be good to get rid of him. He's pulling out his specials, which is... <laughs> okay. <clears throat> hmm. We could go with specials as well. He would be a waste. That would be a waste as well. Yeah, alright. So we're going out in this first round. But if I win, I get another card and I'm already ahead. Alright, so we'll play him. No, you. Get. Oh, okay, this, this is good. This is good. 
So I can play her to get all geared back. <laughs> but not yet. I can play her across and that to get two heals, but currently I don't really have anything. Oh, I can get them back as well. So I can do I can make the same play. I think that is pretty good. Oh, of course that's not gonna work because they're in the uh, <laughs> they're in the discard. Alright. Well we baited out Earth Scorch. That could have been worse, I guess, but it also could have been better. <laughs> yeah, I should have got all geared. That's two scorches. Yeah, now I have this, which is going to direct that. So that wasn't well played by me. I don't think he's very good, you know, because he doesn't bring out these like I thought he would. So yeah. Don't have a lot left. <clears throat> have to try and brute force it. Like if I if I won it now, I've won it now. Otherwise we're in trouble. He's only got two cards left, so. Unless he's got two specials or like another scorch. Ooh. Okay, no, wait, no, no, I've got I've got this. Well do I Let's see what he has. Alright, so he's got two cards left, so I can give him the seven. <clears throat> in the hope that I get more than seven back. If I get... This is tricky. He's got two cards left. It's likely he'll be able to make this difference, so... Ah, uh, it's a tricky one, this. I mean, he might have two weather cards left, right? Like, if I play this and lose, I'll think I shouldn't have done it. And if I don't play it and lose, I'll be like, I should have done it. And either, either way, it could be, could be losses, right? It's very difficult to tell. Um, let's just see what we get. Uh, yeah. No. Okay, so I think that was the play though, because he still got two cards, so we can scotch this down. He might have two though, right? Nice! Otherwise he'd have played it here. That's got him. There's no way. No, you got another one! <laughs> Still, I'm not gonna play this. Unless he's got a Geralt in there. Oh, he's got another spy! Another freaking archer! And uh, he's not done it! He's not done it! <laughs> well played, though! Man! That was a great game. what I get? Gallagher Scott Storm, okay. Alright, back to... Wandering around here. Around here it's wine, wine, and more wine. But me, I prefer brandy. Clang, clang, clangity clang! Witcher, remember the Camerlango pays out a handsome reward for each hands you dispatch. Alright. Bin the heft of my hand. Ah, a professional. I like to trade with your kind. You actually appreciate quality workmanship. Yeah, I went again, man, you know. What have you got there? Yeah, so he's got swords, obviously. 
Do we do more Gwen? I mean... Are we selling these? Are we selling him a nightgown and stuff? Yeah, he had such high hopes, right? I'm going to sell you this bouquet of flowers and uh, this sketchbook. I might keep that. It's got someone's name on it. And this silver. I'm going to sell you this as well, sir. <laughs> yes, I'm a professional. Do you want a pipe? There you go. A lot of gold here, though. That's good. I call it gold. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we can get rid of a lot of stuff here. Like, we have so much coal, but it's one each, right? If we sort it by price, we can see what we've got that's actually worth something. Like that. Like emerald dust and diamond dust. Like, if we sell all this, our money's fine. Obviously, we won't be able to craft something. But there's a way to get rich quick. You know, we could sell, like, most of it. Suddenly, I'm rich again. So, oh, <laughs> good. And you know what? Care for a quick round of Gwent? We like Gwent, okay? Don't leave me alone. And my deep cry. I pound steel and watch sparks fly. I got Skellige Storm last time. What's this do? Reduces the strength of all range and siege units. 2 1. Wow. Wow, so I'm guessing that Skelliger's pretty high on the um, first tier. Uh, oh no. Still, this is by far our strongest uh, deck, so. Not playing Skelliger. Okay, so Scorch is probably going to be really good. That's going to be good as well. That I might get rid of because I've got it as a power. Good. I might get rid of you, you know. Because I don't have any more of these, so what's. This doesn't count. Like, if I draw him, it doesn't bring these out. I've got two of them, so I can get rid of one of them. All right, so we get rid of you to get another one. Uh, get rid of you. All right, well, this is this is doubling up like this is a waste. Okay. So I'm really hoping he overloads this. No, no, no. What does the cow do? Moo. Okay. When this card is removed from the field, it summons a powerful new unit card to take its place. I like it. What do you do? <laughs> Doubles the strength of all you guys in that roll, limited to one per roll. Okay. <laughs> right then. <laughs> um, cool. We've got Yennefer as a uh, healing as well. Uh, hello. Only got two. Yeah. Noob. A scorch removes everything except the cow. Which might not be a bad idea. It doesn't remove him or you as well. We I can clear weather though, couldn't I? Yeah, it's probably a better idea. <sighs> and I'm still winning. Need him! <laughs> 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 
No, 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 it's, it's definitely a nice day. I, I insist. <laughs> I was hoping to give up, you know. Watch, we get rid of this, of course. We might play the other one. Yeah, this doesn't do a lot. I'm gonna get ready to go I think. Unless someone can tell me otherwise. <clears throat> he really doesn't have many cards left. Oh no. Okay, now he does. Now he's got a few more. I'm gonna press on blindly. Scorch still benefits us. It's getting to the stage where it's the only thing we can play. <laughs> like, I do have her to get another card back as well. And I think Skelliger's going to get a lot of this. I could play this as well to get rid of five points of his total. <clears throat> He's only got three cards left, so... Okay, still got you. Yeah, it's fine. Like, he's only got two cards left, so... Even if I quit this here... What's he gonna do? Like, maybe win this round, but then I play her, get a card back, him, I win the next two. But of course, if I win this round, I get another card anyway. Just might not be a damaging card. But if I Scorch, at least I get rid of him, and then that... Yeah, I might as well Scorch now. Yeah, he's got nothing now. So Scorching now would be a bad idea, because that would destroy these and him. So I shall skip now. He's got one card left, so... Okay. <laughs> I think so, yes. And now he's got nothing, so... Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, so the cow turns into that, but still. Crowns and a young berserker. All right. Do monsters have mamas and papas? Some do. This is an outrage. The stands are full. I'm sorry. I shall find a complaint. Our friends in high places. Please give them my condolences. <laughs> and the giant belched forth the roar so horrid it shook all the bones from the trees. Then what? It halt the millstone of the knights. Oh my! But virtue always trumps villainy. With his friends at his side, he owned best of all yet, and restored peace to the land. Yay! You'd best behave, friend. Need to speak to the Duchess urgently. Mind if I All right, you scamps. Store is done. Go find your parents. But the Pamarine. What about the story of Ritik and the dragon? A tales for another time. But take a good look at the man who stands before you now. This is Geralt of Rivia, the master witcher who lent his valiant hand to the defeat of the giant Goliath. Master Witcher. Is it true virtue always trumps villainy? <laughs> Not always. Could go either way. Sometimes virtue wins, sometimes villainy gets the upper hand. Still worth being good. But why? If it doesn't mean you'll win. Palmer and Story, think back. A decent man attracts other good folk, makes friends he can count on. A rogue? Well, 
It can only count on other rogues. And who would you rather have for a friend? A man of virtue? I must agree. Now, that will do for questions. Go find your parents. Her enlightened highness has doubtless arrived at the tourney grounds to watch the battle in the arena. If we hurry, we'll be in time to speak with her before the spectacle begins. Lead the way. Far too many children in the field. He's fighting. Elf guardian gladiators. <laughs> Close, but not quite. As you will soon see. Someone's gonna fight a Shalemar? With only some elves on its tail to confuse it, slow it down? Whatever is the problem? The beast is a gift, from the Emperor no less. Shouldn't torment the beast. How would you like to be dumped in an arena, blindfolded with a string of bells dangling from your ass? Pity a monster. You, a witcher. I slay monsters who are a threat to humans. You're out to humiliate one to entertain a crowd. No knight will gain any glory from this. Who's going to fight the beast? Guillaume, a young man you met. Yeah. Mentioned he promised his heart's capture a monster trophy. Great love demands great sacrifices. Let's go. I dedicate my imminent victory to fair lady Vivian. Dude, you're gonna get wrecked. It's begun. The fight shall have to end first. We must wait. Oh god, I knew it, I knew it. You can't call much about this game, but I, I knew that was gonna happen. Gotta keep it down. Alas, for nightling, the beast heaved its foul girth. That blew Soror and knocked him to earth. Then down came the Witcher in one mighty pound to give fight to the beast. Its plans confound. Hmm. How do you hurt it? <laughs> oh. I the see. The beast has been weighed by the gods. Soon the witcher shall triumph against all odds. Alright, so I gotta give up. Stop getting hurt, dude. If you weren't here, this would be easy. We need to make a charge, but how do I make a charge when he's in the bloody way all the time? 
Come here. Not bad. get it like I know I'm supposed to make it charge so that it falls on his back and then it's vulnerable you can hit its underside but how do I do that with this idiot always going ah, viva la France and, and, and getting in the way how do I stop him dying Yeah, okay, right, right, come over here. Like, he's just... Oh, there you go. No? Oh, yeah, that's it. And thus the witch's life was snuffed. All our hopes he's gonna die. had turned to dust. Stench. Yeah, he's gonna die, but... Why do we have to help him, right? Why can't... Alas, Palmerin lies prostrate. Yeah, he's he has breathed his last breath. <clears throat> but now... Avenge him, which... Yeah, I will. I'm gonna avenge him. Yeah, I'm gonna avenge him. I'm gonna avenge him. Yeah, like that. See, I couldn't have that happen when he was in the freaking arena. It's <laughs> fun. Struck the monster right through. Like a bow who leaves at the love's first spurt. So the witch wooed the Shelma, then its foul heart. Hurt. You're making a terrible mess, you do. Are you done? I mean, oh, okay. Drink up the ocean and set fire to the wood. For nothing in this struggle can come to any good. So I'm guessing his death will have, like, serious implications with the story, but the dude was an idiot. I mean, I should never have, like, let him join me in here. Hey, come on. Nice! Good enough, right? Good enough, good enough. Shots dive, flee, faint. Its racer strikes belly. Shelma's cries ring aloud. Blood transforms into jelly. Oh, I don't do this again. There we go. Okay, we got the hair, but yeah, he died. The Shelma lies defeated by Geralt of Rithia, master of the witchering trade. Behold, as the last gasps of life seep from the beast. Master Geralt, do what you must. Finish the deed! Monster's no threat. No need to kill it. A victor may always show mercy. It is his right. Long live Geralt the Merciful! Pikeman, see to the beast! Who's gonna kill it anyway? No, it's alive. Forgive me. 
I am not as nimble as in my younger years. Oh, okay, he's still alive. You fought bravely. Thanks for your help. I thought he was dead. Guillaume. The lad came damned close oh. to dying. So did you! I'm fine. Not hurt at all. Vivian? Smile as befits a hero and keep silent. Speech clearly pains you. She approaches. Geralt. We must talk. Vivian. You shall talk later, in the medic's tent. Geralt, magnificent, breathtaking. Your grace. We knew that to summon you was a brilliant idea. We are delighted, raffish, to have struck upon it. And I'm truly... Uh, honored. See to our young hero. Hop, hop. For we must make off with Geralt. We should talk. We had been long awaiting your arrival. Had nearly lost hope. Then suddenly, that entrance, so spectacular. Your Grace. Shale Mars are dangerous creatures, even to knights in full plate armor. Nonsense. In Toussaint, knights have battled beasts for mere glory since time immemorial. True. Guillaume suffered a few bumps, scars, and bruises, but in return gained eternal glory as he who slew the monster. Mm hmm. What about the crowd? Say the Shale Mar had vaulted into the stands. Would have been a massacre. Geralt. Though we value your fortuitous intervention in the arena, we would remind you your services have been retained. And as shall soon become clear, you will be generously compensated for completing another task altogether. Your Grace, my contract. I'd like to discuss it. Naturally, but not here. We shall need Damien. He let the investigation pending your arrival. But wherever could he be? Come, we must find him. Tell us, have you come alone? Or did Viscount Julian accompany you? Wish to see Dandelion, Your Grace? Yes. I mean, no. Ugh. <sighs> yes. But solely to tell him we regret. Yes, deeply regret rescinding the death sentence we so justly handed down upon him. <laughs> if we could turn back time, we would make certain he sat in a tower till he rotted. No, we would ensure he was broken on the wheel, then drawn, hanged, and quartered. Ah, the very man we would entrust with his tasks. Damien de la Tour, captain of my personal guard. Your Grace, Witcher. Greetings. Sorry to have to tell you, but the guardsmen handling the last victim's body. I know already. The creature in the cellar of Corvo Bianco. Was it the beast? No. A Bruxa, a kind of vampire. Not the beast, but tied to it in some way. You know this how? Through careful analysis of the evidence, both on the riverbank and at Corvo Bianco. Do you mean to insinuate the investigation thus far has been sloppy? Geralt insinuates nothing of the sort. We must listen to him attentively. I examined the body of the beast's last victim. Might have found something. Need to analyze it. A quiet place, that's what I could use most right now. And maybe the help of an alchemist or a mage. Also like to hear all you know about the previous victims. Take it Sir Delatour is my man for that. Firstly, call me Damien, please. Secondly, you should know I spoke against summoning you here. I've heard much about you. You bring trouble, or thus far have, always. And we've enough trouble as it is. Yet we are capable of defeating the beast on our own without an outsider's help. I've no doubt about it. Damien, we settled the matter of the Witcher's employ some time past. Definitively. Since you have broached it, nonetheless, 
Let us discuss Geralt's pay. Are the legends true? Do witchers usually demand that which you find at home, yet did not expect? Uh, not. not quite, Your Grace. Law of surprise? It's something we invoke at times, but rarely. Usually we just take gold. Disappointing. This law sounds rather romantic. On the other hand, on returning to the palace, we would likely find impatient petitioners or a set of sample fabrics for a new dress. Poor rewards, both. I fear you'd not have much use for any of the surprises we are likely to come upon. Thus, we've decided you shall receive the deed to a vineyard, Corvo Bianco, and the sum of coin. You will doubtless consider this adequate. Title to the vineyard shall be given to you at once. Surely you'll need lodgings while you hunt. The coin, however, will be yours only once you have slain the beast. Lovely, generous gesture, Your Grace. Ah, Corvo Bianco. Isn't it the Duchy's temporary morgue? Is it now? The Chancellery has bungled things again, we fear. Not to be left unsupervised for one instant. Yet, in its mood, a morgue should present minimal problems to a witcher. What's more, nothing enhances a wine's reputation better than a grim legend. Thank you, Your Grace. I accept the contract, of course. But as I said before, I'll need some information. So we've got a vineyard. Okay. Uh, well, well, we'll see. So it's like a base, and okay, okay. Hmm. Well, that could either be something or nothing. It could be you have this, and it's you can. It's just like for flavor, or it could actually mechanically be right. So grow like grow some wine. I know that's not the right term, but that's what I went with. Grow some wine, Geralt, and sell it, and, and we'll judge you. I don't know. How did it start? Who was the first victim? Crespi was the first to die. He was famed once for his many glorious tournament victories. Then he grew old, hung up his sword, and took to winemaking. Crespi was not loved by the wine merchants. He was ruthless in business and thought to cheat many a time. He asked us for a dispensation from all court ceremonies. We did not grant it. We could not. Once you've taken the oath of a knight, you remain a knight till death. How'd he die? Where'd they find the body? Quite unusual, the circumstance. He was at a feast when suddenly one of his fellow feast goers noticed he was missing. The town watch found him an hour later. On his hands and knees, propped against the town pillory, his sword hanging from his neck. He had died of wounds inflicted with claws, not a weapon. Blows of great force. So he died suddenly, but the body was on its knees, meaning someone posed it. So it seems. Second murder. Tell me what you know. In the city there are certain nooks. No one reasonable ventures there after dark. Ramon Dulac's corpse was found in one such place. With the first murder, Terror gripped the city. Its inhabitants grew wary, kept to safe areas. Consequently, news of the second victim came to us from a group of concerned cut purses. Criminals fear the beast? <clears throat> Telling in a way. Take it you've excluded the possibility that Ramon died at the hands of these bandits. Do you believe me, an amateur? Not hands, but claws killed Ramon Dulac. The wound was deep, clean. His body was found in the gutter, dressed in nightshirt and cap, a pillow placed under his head, and his sword replaced by a bed warmer. Ramon de Lac, a knight who but a dozen years past was an advisor to our father, the Duke. Someone went to a lot of trouble to make him look ridiculous. Maybe revenge was the motive. It's not out of the question. Du Lac had shady dealings with the criminal underworld. But no one ever came forth with concrete proof of any misdoings. So, first two victims were knights, best years behind them. The same could be said of the third. Sir Delacroix was wont to claim that in modern times knights face new challenges. 
Enterprise being the latest addition to the chivalric virtues. He made a veritable fortune in the grain trade. Palmerin even nicknamed him Sir de la Stinci. Found a coin pouch on his body. Contained florins dating from various times, hailing from different provinces of the Empire. Delacroix loved coin, true, but had no patience for numismatics. Lots of similarities between the victims. All the bodies were found in strange places under extraordinary circumstances. Seems the murderer, whoever or whatever it is, has some meaning to convey. These were honorable men. We are horrified by the disdain, the disrespect with which they were treated. These were knights of Toussaint. Blast it. Might be the point. From what you say, none was a model of virtue. Ever considered that's what the beast's trying to draw attention to? All the murdered men were knights who swore fealty to the five chivalric virtues. And even if the- Knights of Toussaint swear fealty to what virtues exactly? Honor, wisdom, generosity, valor and compassion. Five virtues. Why are they so important to your knights? Strange question. Your Grace, forgive me. I'm a foreigner trying to understand another land's customs. You are forgiven. According to legend, the virtues we cultivate were bestowed upon us by the Lady of the Lake. How we truly came to espouse them, none remember. In Toussaint, we believe men of low birth should be simple-hearted and obedient. We expect much more, however, of our knights. They are to be soldiers and courtiers, lords and servants. Thus, the need for clear moral guidelines. At the time of his dubbing, a knight vows to demonstrate throughout his life honor, wisdom, generosity, valor, and compassion. Lady of the Lake, huh? Okay. All right, okay. So we're in Bretonia, essentially. We're in French Arthurian times. Right. Beast seems to be pointing up moral decay, denouncing it. Victims were all humiliated. Might have been murdered to emphasize their lack of specific chivalric virtues. Honor compromised by the pillory. Wisdom by ridicule. Generosity by a coin pouch shoved down a throat. It seems to fit, true, though not perfectly. Can't discount the theory if it's on the lips of everyone in town. Say our reasoning's right. Next murder will be just as showy and denounce the victim's lack of the fourth virtue, valor. We can also assume that victim will be an elder knight. Let's think. Hmm. At the moment, all the knights are either at the tourney grounds or in the palace gardens. Our annual hare hunt shall begin there shortly. Have you heard of the custom? Milton mentioned something. Seemed excited to prance around in a bunny costume. Not sure why. Hang on. Strange circumstances, a knight advanced in years, the famed cowardice of rabbits. Could it be that simple? Is Milton de Peyrac Peyren the next victim? Milton also knew Delacroix, told me so down by the river. Damien, to me something so obvious. De Peyrac Peyren, Crespi, Delacroix and de Lac formed a knightly team. It was years ago, but... <laughs> Yeah, so we're getting getting shades of seven as well. Film seven. I like that, of course. You know, it's good. They were a team. They were close friends, tightly knit, and as such, earned the trust of our father, the Duke. We often witnessed him turn to them with delicate matters. Later, their paths diverged. Unlikely to be a coincidence. Beast must know it too. It's a lead, I'm sure. Your Grace, we need to find Melton immediately. Rather problematic. You see, the garden entertainments are due to start, and he's disguised as the hare, hiding somewhere, waiting for some tipsy courtiers to find him. The hare's hiding place is a carefully guarded secret. We must call off the game, at once. First and foremost, we must remain calm. Damien, order the garden searched immediately, but discreetly. By no means can we disrupt the festivities. Panic will only incite the beast to strike sooner. And you, Witcher, follow me. My gardens, my knight, I shall take the fall. A murder is out of the question. I will not allow it. Not near my palace. Horses? Ready our horses! Uh. 
Your Grace. Oh. <laughs> what the hell? Why I should? Your Highness, I mind it doesn't get wrinkled. Grace seems right at home in a saddle. This way, through town. Try not to lose your way. Sharp right. Take care. Step aside. Come on, bro. Oh, this is a nice town. Yeah, it's very nice. Where, children? This is not very discreet, my lady. Clear the way, I said. You're supposed to. Supposed to be discreet. It's here, just round the corner. Hurry. We must go to where the game is being held. The participants must find a unicorn's horn, a golden fish, and a phoenix egg. With these in hand, they can deduce where the hair, Milton, hides. Mean we need to find those things too. We've no other option, but time is of the essence, so we shall have to break the rules. We rush all that way, and now we just have a nice stroll into the gardens. Which I'm sure are very nice. If I run, do you run? Okay. <laughs> On second thought, through here. I shall show you where the hunt plays out. Then we will split up. You will get hold of the unicorn horn and the golden fish. While I nab the phoenix egg. That will be quickest. Golden fish. Do I need a rod or a net? Please, Geralt. It's not a real fish. Look there, towards the water. See the lights? The hunters are trying to hook the fish from boats. You must simply dive in and find it. The unicorn. How do I catch it? It's terribly skittish, true, but I'm sure you will find a way to earn its trust. It runs around over there. Look. The Colton fish and the horn both contain things or clues that will help us find Milton. Once you have fish and horn, find me among the other Phoenix egg hunters. <laughs> All clear? Then let's get to it. Alright. Uh, I'm going to do the unicorn first. Sorry, my lady. Out the way. A beast like that probably has no one to split a bottle. Keep calm. Start no That's course. my knees ache something. If I were to call a state courageous or coward, what other part of the state would one have in mind? So I guess the unicorn's going to be a horse with a horn stuck on it. So all I gotta do is calm the horse down with <laughs> Yeah, surely we can just we can Yeah. <laughs> unicorn. Yes. Perhaps an apple will work. 
or some sweets. We would not be in this predicament, dear sister. Were you still a virgin? <laughs> Do you really wish to have this conversation again? Here and now? Hush, or you'll spook the beast. We shall try the sweets. Hey, folks. Gonna have to ruin your fun. Sorry. Who's that? Please don't run. Well, a treat, a treat for the unicorn. We need a treat, a treat for the bloody. All right, what do we got? Thank unicorns, rainbows, little girls, sweets maybe. You have a new quest item? Prepare it, place it. Quick access menu. Okay. Thief! How dare he! Yeah. Scandalous! I know. <laughs> okay. Damn, doesn't have a sweet tooth. All right, fine, fine, fine. Crispy apple. Should like that like any other damn horse. You'd have thought. You'd have thought. Oh, have I just dropped it? No. Okay. I have, but it comes back. I've just solved world hunger. <laughs> An apple. Yum yum. Yeah, yum yum apple. Yum 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 yum. Thank you. Easy. Gardens are huge. Better off on horseback. Like, apparently I can. End like a moose with the head of hard cheese. Yeah, you say that, but I can't do that now. Plus, it's right here, so. Golden fish should be easy to spot once I'm under. There we go. What the place would you think? I don't know. Sorry guys, sorry, sorry. <laughs> We're never gonna be that simple, was it? Hey, wait. Stop, it's important. King Cormorant Sire, accept this offering we bring. Prithee, cast upon us your merciful eye, and bear before us its secrets. As the moon its heavenly course doth trace, in my domain I await that moment of grace, when a soul of good or ill repute brings me a gift, fitting tribute. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Why, you bomb-butt stretch? He I know. It's the game. Disgraceful. I know. <laughs> that was bloody funny, though. It suddenly got very dark. So I was going to record for half an hour, and then suddenly things happened. And I thought there'd be a nice conversation that we could end with, but apparently not. Apparently, oh, there was a boat over there. We fine. Meet the glitches to assemble the clues. End of a moose and the head of hard cheese.
I've ruined everything. I love how he just got out of the water and just smashed the thing. I was like, I was... Dark secrets tell yep. you from a fairy tale that she liked to song. The light, it's positively yeah. useless. She can't possibly see a thing. What? Thank you, Precisely Unicorn. East. Very good friend. It says use your horse, but I can't summon Roach here. Master Witcher, here to hunt the beast? Liam Dare. No! I uh, enjoying the festivities like everything else. No bats. Of course. If you please, Your Grace. We do not please. We act out of the highest necessity. Or shall be explained later. But it's against the rules. I am the rules. Geralt! At last. Got a key and a clue. And I've another. Show me yours. Who wrote this drivel? I begin like a groan, hollowed out with ease, then end like a mouse with a head of hard cheese. <clears throat> the greenhouse someplace cramped. No idea where metal's hiding. No, that's, that, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, I'm. I, all right, okay, all right. I begin like a groan. Hollowed out with ease. Then end like a moose with a head of hard cheese. Too cryptic, this riddle. Got no idea what it's talking about. Yep. Then be silent and let me think. <laughs> Look, if we take Rome, hollow it out and fill it with ease. The letters, that is. We get green. Then mouse, but starting with what heads heart cheese. Why, it's greenhouse. Hmm. Pretty clever. And it sounds right to me. Yeah, that's what there I are thought. Several yeah, I was just gardens, wondering how the game would. The door that locks, yeah. And the key to it looks just like the one we found. Greenhouse it is then. Let's go. Yeah, I thought it was. I just wondered how, if she would get it. Wondered, just curious. Just gonna record for half an hour, guys. Wait here. I'm here. This belonged to you, maybe? It did, but you may keep it. I've a new one. I do not know you. I've done you no harm. Yet first you butchered a Bruxer who was dear to me. Now you pursue me. Why? You've killed four innocent people, at least. And you? How many innocents have you cut down? Plenty. Even more of the guilty, though. You're next. Hmm. I think not. You see, I've something to do still. More murders? Just one. 
not counting yours. <laughs> You're definitely some sort of vampire, aren't you? So I know it's not a great oil, but still. To stay where you were. Regenerate! I know you're in trouble. I can help. I'll help myself! No. He's my friend. Yes, Geralt. It's me. Regis? I... You all right? All is well. All's in order. Wounds such as these heal on vampires in moments. But we've not seen one another in ages, my friend. At least in human terms, that is. How's this even possible? Last I saw you... We... I was a bubbling, shapeless smear, having been rather spectacularly melted into a column of a certain castle. In somewhat better shape now, as you can see. Hardly peak four, mind you, but were I human, folk would think me a demigod, I dare say. I'm sorry. What happened? It was my fault. Never got a chance to apologize. No need, Geralt. Bygones. I did not have to join you on that expedition. No one twisted my arm. Not ringing any bells who this guy is. Miraculous regeneration. How do you manage it? I had help. From the one you hunt. Him? How? And what have you been doing all these years? Not the time nor place for such stories. 
I suspect we'll get a chance to speak at ease and at length later. Now, however, we must deal with the reason that brought us both here. <laughs> Local serial killer seems to obey you. Maybe you could talk him out of it, convince him to stop murdering. Why do you think I've come? It shall not be easy, as death laugh can be rather stubborn. Though you must certainly recall that neither do I surrender readily. So that's his name. He's your friend? You might call it that. Though Detlaf is, how would you humans put it, more bestial than I am. But not to worry. I'm working on him. Haven't exactly done a great job with that. He's killed one night since I got here, at least three others before I arrived. For good reason, I'm sure. Understand, Detlaf is not some decadent shit who kills for sport, or to assuage a dryness of throat or a dullness of mood. So in your opinion, what are his reasons? Precisely what I wish to find out. And then I will convince him of the error of his ways. Got a lot of faith in the guy. Despite appearances to the contrary, you two are quite alike. You've both noble hearts, yet you both are wont to perform ignoble deeds. When circumstances force you to, of course. Remember the year 964? That was three centuries ago. Blind fear gripped Rivia, Lyria, and Spala. Women and children were dying. Their mutilated, dismembered corpses littered the fields. Brute of Lyria. Read about it. Chewed up almost two hundred, then fell to a common poacher supposedly armed with a dagger blessed by some prophet. It fell to Detlaf, who then found a poacher asleep in the brush near his snares and dropped the fiend's corpse at his feet. And thus, a legend was born. Awfully good of him, but do I need to know this? Yes, so you'll understand Detlaf is no cold-blooded killer. I believe he's landed in some mess and he sees no way out. What makes you say that? Vilgefort melted my body. Detlaf found what was left. As per our codex, he had a choice. To leave me where I was, or to care for me and nurture my remains. He chose the latter. Regenerated me at no small expense in his own blood. Do you know what that means to a vampire? The gravity of the endeavor? Probably same thing it means to a human. You owe him your life. Much more than that. The act itself made us blood brethren. A bond so strong humans cannot even imagine. Which is why I know something ill is afoot. Always had an overdeveloped sense of empathy. Each vampire has a unique talent. One they hone over centuries. It's precisely what renders us so difficult to classify. Detlaf's trump card is his herd instinct, his tribal propensity. In point of fact, he prefers the company of lesser vampires and shuns that of humans. If he walks among you, killing egregiously, it can only mean something's upset him immensely. Anything specific? Some set of things that'd be likely to set him off? <sighs> How should I say this? Detlaf doesn't understand men, their world, its rules, its conventions. He's naive in a sense. He doesn't comprehend your games, knows not what it means to lie, deceive. <laughs> suggesting he's maladjusted, inventing his rage. I'm suggesting maladjustment can at times breed conflict. But is it the case this time? I cannot say, but intend to find out. Gotta find him before something upsets him even more, and all Beauclair is awash with blood. Well, we share a cause then, just like the old days. Not entirely. I mean, when I find him, you know. I know you've a contract on his head. Yet your true task is to stop the beast killing, not necessarily to kill the beast, am I right? All in all, sure. Let us find him. By the time we do, I hope I'll have convinced you Detlaf is no monster. Fine, all right already. But for now, evidence is stacking up against him. Hear that? The posse. Knights must have tracked me here. I prefer they not find me here. I've makeshift quarters at Mer Lachey's Long Cemetery. We'll meet there. See you. Which 
Sure. We flew here as fast as our courses would carry us. Yet I fear we're late all the same. Pray, where is the beast? Still investigating. About to inspect this site. Withdraw your men before they trample all over the evidence. Ahem! <clears throat> Sirs! We must let the Witcher do his work. Milton's murder cannot go unoffensed. Well, it was a good fight. Yeah, similar to the old gear fight. Very similar to the old gear. I need to gather, gather evidence. Gather up the evidence is what I am doing. Let us gather all the evidence that we can. Yes, evidence. All this evidence must be gathered. Yes, much evidence. Yes, indeed. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to call it there. It was longer. That was much longer than I expected. Uh, I should have stopped it at the Gwent games, but then thought, I'll do a bit further, then we got the fight in the arena, and then from the arena fight, there was no break until now. We gained two levels, which is ridiculous, um, but I'll look at that next time. Um, so thank you for watching. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Uh, if I don't do this now, I'll probably forget, so we'll get the loot up here. Better be good. Hmm was not bad at all. Yes. Oh, hello. Ooh. My beloved Clara, you have no idea how happy I am that the warehouse has been closed. How good it is to know each time we wish to embrace, no one shall stand in our way. Neither my father nor your mother. We shall. I shall never occur to them. We rendezvous at this, shut, at this shuttered warehouse. I already laugh at the thought of them clambering over rooftops like before, or looking through the rushes in the river. Even now, writing these words, I feel how much I would like to see you. I hope it will be like yesterday. I cannot speak for you, but as for me, it would just as well we never set foot um, out of this, our warehouse, our wonderland, from Albert. Nice bit of uh, Romeo and Juliet going there, I think. Don't know if it's got anything to do with anything, but <clears throat> anyways, right, yeah. So I'm going to call it there. Good fight. Enjoyed it. Good episode. It's coming up nicely. Don't know who that Regis is. I recognize her name, but it is kind of a kind of a generic name. So, yeah, not, not too sure whether I recognize it or not. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Cheers very much. Toodaloo.